Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin Lore. I am the founder of Project Divergent, and on this podcast episode, I have a bit of a fun topic I want to talk about. Last week, we talked about a bit of a sub- touchy subject, ableism. We had Mrs. Lisa Liptak, a former special educator, as a guest, and I want to lighten things up because that topic's a little bit rough for many neurodivergent people, so we're going to talk about fidget and sensory toys this week. For those of you that don't know what either of them are, fidget toys are used to distract the user from classic fidgeting, such as bouncing your leg, picking your skin, etc. They come in many different variants, effectiveness may vary. I happen to have a few myself, such as thinking putty, fidget spinners, stress balls, all kinds of stuff. Sensory toys are used to stimulate one or more of the user's senses. They are mainly used to calm neurodivergent people by providing them with the sensory experience they crave. Many schools have what are called sensory rooms. These are usually in schools designed for people with special needs, but many public elementary schools, such as my local elementary school, also happens to have one. These rooms vary, but have one mutual goal, providing a calming experience for children in need. These rooms can have fiber optic lights, swings, mats, all kinds of accessories. My personal favorites, though, are the fiber optic lights. The fidget craze began in 2017 with the popularization of the fidget spinner. Stores sold out all their fidget spinners just as quick as they restocked. Schools considered them a distraction and started banning them. Memes were made around these toys. It was a very interesting moment in time to live through. In fact, that whole time period was just all over the place. Fidget toys and sensory toys have been around much longer than that, of course. It wasn't just the fidget spinner. But what do you think the first ever fidget toy was, exactly? Memory foam stress balls, water timers, silly putty? All of those answers are wrong. The first technical fidget toy was called bouting balls, and they were invented by the Ming Dynasty between the 14th and 17th century. These were two metal balls that were palm-sized and could be rotated and squeezed to reduce stress. In 2021, There are now all sorts of different fidget toys, and with the help of TikTok, there are more brands being popularized, as well as recipes to make your own fidgets. As someone who is on the spectrum myself, I have found quite a few various fidget toys that I have found personally enjoyable and very effective. One of my earliest experiences I think I've ever had with a fidget toy was when my mom worked for this insurance company back when we lived in Florida, and one of her co-workers had so many toys on her desk. She had plushes... She had, I don't even remember, I know she had plushes, but she also had this water timer. And water timers, what they are is you basically have this little, like, hourglass-shaped figure. And it's filled with water, and there's colored water at the bottom. And when you flip it, the colored water sinks to the bottom of the water timer. And for me, that was really addicting. It had really nice colors. I was an armored. It was really simple, but I could sit there for hours playing with it. They currently sell them on Amazon for $6.99, and if you have Prime, you can apply for free shipping. And also many zoos, aquariums, science museums happen to have them. The locations obviously may vary. I know my local zoo back in Florida had one, but most gift shops happen to sell them. Another popular fidget toy is very similar to the fidget spinner, and it is called the fidget cube. Now this toy has about five different features. It has a flicking switch, it has a spinning wheel, it has little rolling wheels along with the rolling like marble I think, and also clicking buttons which were my personal favorite to keep any fidgeter distracted and or entertained. These also sell on Amazon for $6.99 and also can be found at various gift stores. Back when I had mine before it broke, I actually bought mine at Spencer's, but I don't think they sell them anymore. This was in, like, 2017 when fidget spinners were all over the place. And one fidget toy that is not so new but can be found at any store ever is called a bag of balls, and everyone has seen this squishy stress ball that has the net that covers over it, and then when you squeeze it, it changes color. Like, I think, like, there's a red one that when you squeeze it, it turns orange, and vice versa, you know. This is actually a fidget toy. Most people don't think that, but yeah, stress balls can be considered a fidget toys. It distracts, your hand is doing something while you're trying to focus, so it classifies as a fidget toy. This toy can be bought at Walmart, Amazon, and all kinds of different stores for relatively cheap prices, but of course they vary. I think Walmart sells it for like $2, and it's usually up in the front where like the Pokemon cards are, 
So if you really want a cheap fidget toy, that's one of the ways to go, actually. Another fidget toy that I somehow ended up buying at Spencer's, that is still sold at Spencer's, by the way, is the Schilling Needle Memory Foam Stress Ball. And these balls come in so many different types that I don't even think I can list them all without accidentally excluding a few. So here's some types. There's the color changing stress ball, there's the giant stress ball, the fruit shaped stress toy, the cat shaped stress toy, the shaggy stress ball, the gumball stress ball, and the snowball. But there's also more than that, I think. I'm not sure. One con about these toys though are the squishy texture actually tends to pick up a lot of lint. So you'll have to wash it with soap and water if you drop it on the floor and it's quite often that you will. But other than that, it's pretty effective, it's really addicting, and it can be bought at Spencer's, Barnes & Noble, and a bunch of various knickknack stores tend to sell it. Unfortunately, I don't think Walmart sells it, I think Target sells it, and the prices vary, but I know my personal one was, I believe, the giant one, and it was $10 at Spencer's. So that's one that's pretty cool, and it reduces a lot of stress, and I use it when I get really angry, and... It makes me feel way better. Thinking Putty is also a good fidget toy, with the most popular brand being Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty. Now, the reason why for this is if you go to his site, puttyworld.com, you will find so many brands. There is, like, so many colors, 20-something plus brands, and I honestly think they may have more than Neato. I know I said that Neato had a lot, but I think a lot is probably an understatement for this website, actually. And they have three different sizes. The mini putty sells for $3, the regular putty sells for $7, and the bigger container sells for $15. The various types include precious jewel-themed, scented, sport-themed, neon, color-changing, glow-in-the-dark, magnetic, illusions, hypercolor, liquid glass, metallic. There's nothing this company does not sell, basically, is what I'm getting at. Um, you thought Silly Putty was cool because it bounces and can pick up newspaper print? Yeah, no. This putty is amazing with what it can do. Any brand that you buy. Who needs flying cars? We have magnetic putty. You have putty that attracts magnets. What? <laughs> this website has a location finder where you can buy the putty in person, but if you can't find anything, your local Barnes & Noble will definitely have its own shelf dedicated to it. That's where I ended up buying seven of them. And this website has a massive selection, so if you can't find any in person at all, even at your local Barnes & Noble, I would recommend checking that website out because they have more brands that are online exclusive, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Some other various fidgets that have rose in popularity since the fidget spinner days are including, but not limited to, Tangles, Squishmallows, Kinetic Sand, GoPop, and more, and if TikTok has taught me anything in the last year, it's that literally anything can be a fidget. Water bottle, fidget. Paper, fidget. Box, fidget. Kids are interesting with what they can come up with. But hopefully this fidget-themed week helps someone interested in fidget toys find their special toy that helps them. Stay golden, everybody.